Okay, so AMD just launched some new laptop CPUs, the Ryzen 4000 series, and they are very impressive, like legitimately very powerful CPUs for laptops. There are, however, a strange number of articles that are like, this is the end of Intel, Intel's dead. Like, it's so not the case. So I reached out to both my contacts at Intel and AMD just to hear both sides of the story and to see what both companies think of each other in terms of the industry and where the, the laptop industry sits right now. And I thought I would make a video for people that are interested in buying a laptop in 2020 because it's not as clear cut as it may seem. It's not like dump Intel, everyone should be buying AMD laptops. That's really not the case. Okay, but first of all, these new AMD chips are the real deal. For certain users, for people that can actually take advantage of multi-core processing, these chips are great. So for some workflows, it really makes so much more sense to purchase one of these new AMD laptops than what Intel has to offer right now. Now, in the past, regardless of how much like marketing AMD threw into their laptop stuff, they were never good. And you can tell from the manufacturer side, like they never put AMD chips in the past into their premium laptops. Like they just never did it. Anytime they used an AMD chip in one of their laptops, it was usually some kind of like plastic, more value oriented device. But this all changed a few days ago because now we're seeing some very premium devices being made with these Ryzen CPUs. Now the reason for this, the reason why this chip is so special and so good is because it's the world's first seven nanometer processor. And the key here is power efficiency. They are able to push out a crazy amount of performance per watt. And it's given these new chips some very serious legs. And it's also provided some competition, finally, in the laptop CPU space. Now, there are a couple things you need to be aware of. First, these chips are really good for two, no, I'd say one thing really, content creation. That's seriously the best by far the best feature about these new AMD chips. It doesn't really matter which application you're using because eight cores is almost always gonna be better than four cores or six cores when it comes to content creation. Now, the other thing they drew attention to was gaming, but we're talking about gaming with the integrated graphics on these new Ryzen chips. And we're seeing decent performance, like way better than what Intel offers in their current integrated graphics solutions. But keep in mind that these are still integrated graphics. These are not representative of actual gaming laptops. So the real strength of these new AMD chips really just lies in their ability to process in multi-core applications, like actual workflows. Now, another thing I was interested in was battery life. So I played with the engineering samples I've had just to kind of see what they could do. And I've spoken to some of the guys from AMD just to learn more about this. So this is my gut feeling on it. The seven nanometer chips from AMD are so much better than what they've had in the past. Because in the past, AMD's laptop chips were really poor with idle state battery consumption. They are much improved, but Intel stuff is still better. And the biggest thing comes from just years of optimization. Intel has spent so much time working with this architecture and working with laptop manufacturers to be really good at battery consumption. And the companies out there that are making laptops that are designed to last as long as possible are going to stick with Intel chips. But the thing is, the trade-off for most people seems to be worth it. Like you just get so much better performance with eight cores in a laptop than four. Uh, for Apple users, if you're someone who's always been interested in an in AMD-based MacBook Pro, it's it's not gonna happen anytime soon. Apple's software is just way too finely tuned for Intel's hardware that it's, yeah, it, it's, it sounds really cool on paper, but no. Uh, okay, I'm gonna wrap this up with two kind of bigger picture thoughts here. The first thing is pricing. AMD in the past has always been cheaper when it comes to their laptop offerings, but because they know they have something good here, the pricing from what I've seen of all the devices that have had like MSRPs pop up, it's not cheap. Not that it's expensive, but because they know they have something that's comparable, if not better than what Intel has, they are pricing it at kind of like what you'd expect for a high performance premium device. And the second thing is Intel's response to all of this has been Tiger Lake. And Tiger Lake has one clear advantage to me. It's the GPU performance. Like we've been told that the Tiger Lake CPUs are supposed to have a significantly better GPU than what even the Ryzen 4000 chips have. So I'm looking forward to it. Here's my take on this whole like laptop industry right now. In the year 2020, we finally have like two real competitors. Companies making compelling devices or compelling components for laptops. I think it's cool. If you've been holding off on a laptop upgrade, 
I think this is the year to do it. There's just a lot of cool stuff on the table. If you're a content creator, the eight core stuff from AMD just makes a lot of sense. If you're a gamer or if you're looking for a more productivity focused device, or if you're like a student that just wants a really long battery life in their laptop, I don't know if AMD is the answer yet. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.